Hello, my name is Andrew Van Slars, and this is my third video about Riot.js. In this video, we'll take a look at Riot's server-side rendering capabilities with Node. If you're not already familiar with Riot.js, I recommend you take a look at my first video, Introduction to Riot.js, and my second video where we cover loops, events, and callbacks. In this video, we will cover how to create a simple Express app, how to integrate the Swig templating engine for Express, how to render a Riot tag on the server and include it in the response, and how to get our pre-rendered tag to continue to work as expected once it's been loaded into the browser. Well, let's take a look at some code. Just like the previous two videos, we'll be using the Atom text editor. I have a terminal window open so we can execute commands with the terminal, and we have a browser so we can take a look at our completed work. We're gonna be building a simple node application. So to get started, we're gonna go into our terminal and we're gonna execute an npm init. And this is gonna ask us a series of questions. Pressing enter will take the default response and that's all we need for this example. So I'm just gonna press enter for the name, the version, the description, and all the way through all the options. Okay, and that's done. I'm gonna clear out the terminal. Running npm init has created this package.json file and we can see that all the responses that we took the defaults on got loaded into that file. So now we're gonna go back to our terminal and we need to install some node modules. So I'm gonna run npm install for express. I'm gonna pass it the save option. And if we look up at the editor here, we can see the node modules folder has been created. So there's gonna be an express folder in there. And I'm also going to npm install Riot. Again, passing it the save option. And I'm going to install Swig, which is the templating engine that we're going to use inside of our Express app to create our pages on the server side. And with those done, we can take a look at package.json and see that it's been updated to show Express, Riot, and Swig as dependencies of this application. Now that we've installed the node modules that we need, let's get started on our application. App.js is going to be the file that runs our application on the server side. It's going to use Express to handle requests and respond with output that's gonna to go to the page and get rendered in the browser. So we're gonna start off by declaring a few variables. So var express is gonna make a call to require to load the express module. Same thing's gonna happen on the second line with swig. And then we're gonna create a variable called app and we're gonna set that to equal express. The next thing our application needs is a way to handle a request. So an express is gonna be called a route so we're gonna set up a route for the root of our web application. So we'll see we have app, which is referencing our express app, dot get, meaning it's gonna to respond to an HTTP get. The forward slash in single quotes there is the route that it's gonna to respond to, so just the root of our application. And then we have a function callback that accepts a request and a response object. So we need to do two more things and our super simple express application will be ready to go. So the first thing we need to do is inside our get handler, we need to respond with some kind of content to display in the browser. And then we need to tell our application to actually listen for requests. So we're gonna get, add a line inside of app get and then one more at the root level of our file. So response.send hello world is simply gonna respond to this request for our app with the words, hello world, no markup, no HTML, and that's fine. The browser will be able to handle that just for a simple test. And then we have a line that says app.listen, and we're passing in 3000. 3000 is the port that we're gonna listen on. With that in place, I can go into a second tab on my terminal, and I'm just gonna type in node and pass it the name of our file, app.js, and press enter. And if we look at the terminal, it doesn't look like anything's happened, but our app is actually running. So I'm gonna to go to the browser. I'm gonna to go to localhost 3000. 
And when everything goes as expected, we'll see hello world in the browser. All right, now that we know that's running, we're gonna make a couple changes. So I'm gonna go back to my terminal window where I ran that app and you'll see that it's just hanging here. I'm gonna hit control C to stop the app from running. And I wanna update my code file to give us some kind of indication that the app is actually running. So in my app.listen, I can pass it an optional callback. And in that callback, I'm just gonna throw in a console.log so that we have an indication that the server's running. And then I can go into the terminal window and I can run node app.js again. And this time you'll see it pauses for a second, shows us the server is listening on port 3000. I can go in here, refresh it, everything still responds as expected. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the app, clear out the console. So now we need to tell Express that we wanted to use Swig as our templating engine. And once that's done, then we can go ahead and set up a template and have our app respond with an actual HTML page. In order to do that, we're gonna go into our app.js file and we're gonna add a line at the top and we're gonna call app.engine and we're gonna pass it HTML as a string and then swig.render file. And this is gonna tell Express to use swig's render file method to render HTML. Now I need to tell our app what to use as our view engine and where to get our templates. So we can add two more lines, both calls to app.set. The first one we're calling view engine and passing it HTML. And the second one, our views directory is gonna be our current directory name slash views. So we need to add a views directory and inside that directory, we're gonna add an index.html file and that's gonna represent our index template. In our index.html file, we'll just add the core tags for an HTML file and we'll give it a title, riot.js server side rendering. And in the body, we we'll just throw an h1 in there and that's enough of a template to make sure it works. So I'm gonna go back to app.js we're still responding with hello world text. So we're gonna change that respond.send to respond.render, and we're just simply gonna pass it index. So this is how we're gonna tell Express to use our index template. Let's start up our application again, so node app.js. We'll see that the server's listening on port 3000. We can go back to our browser and refresh, and we'll see that we get back hi, nice big bold letters showing that our H1 is rendering, which means our template's working. So let's go ahead and control C to stop the app. And we'll keep going with our changes. We don't have a riot tag yet, but the end goal here is to create a riot tag, get it to render on the server so that our initial page response comes back with the fully formed HTML output from our tag. When we call render with a riot tag on the server, the return value of that is gonna be an HTML string. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we can get an HTML string into our template output using a variable in our app. So in our app.get, we're gonna add an HTML string as a variable. So here I have var sample HTML equals h2, this is a test. Now we need to get that into our template. So let's go to our template file, go to index.html, and underneath our existing h1, we're gonna add a variable. And the way Swig handles variables is it encloses them in double curly braces on either side. So we add tag content. This puts a variable called tag content in our template, and that's gonna get rendered on the server. And now that we have that in place, we need to go back into app.js, and we need to get that variable into our template. When we call response.render, we can pass it a second optional argument and that second argument is an object literal. That object literal can contain all of the variables with their corresponding values that are gonna get injected into our template. So we'll pass that in here, and we're gonna pass in tag content with the value of our sample HTML variable. Let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. Go back in my terminal, node app.js, tells me it's listening. I can refresh the browser. And we'll see that our original static content is rendered properly, but our variable was passed in and the HTML was escaped. 
So this is a feature to keep things safe and make sure that you don't allow anything malicious to be injected into your pages. But in our case, we know where the content's coming from. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that escaping functionality off so that we can render the HTML from our variable. So I'll go back into the terminal, kill that. And back in our index.html, we need to pass a filter into our variable called safe, and that's gonna tell Swig to render that HTML without escaping the tags. So with that in place, let's go back and run our application one more time. We'll go back to our browser and refresh, and this time we'll see that our HTML variable content is rendered appropriately. And I'm gonna go back into the terminal and control C out of the application, clear the terminal, and let's move on. Now that we have our basic express application running, it's using the templating engine that we selected. It can render a template. And we can pass in a variable of HTML and have it rendered properly. Now we need to go ahead and create our Riot tag. I'm gonna add a file for my tag, and we're just gonna call it hello world. In the tag, we'll wrap everything in the tag name as our root element. And for simplicity's sake, just to start, we'll go ahead and we'll add a message in the tag just a simple static h2, hello from the hello world tag. Now we need to make some updates to app.js so we can use our riot tag on the server. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add a riot variable with a call to require riot. I'm also gonna add a variable for the tag itself. So I'm gonna create a variable called hello and I'm gonna call require to hello world.tag. Notice that I'm using the path in this call to require because it's not in the node modules folder. So I have to tell require where to go and find that file. Now I wanna to go to the code where we assigned our HTML string earlier to a variable and replace this with a call to riot.render. So I create a variable tag output and I'm gonna call riot.render. I'm gonna pass it hello, which is a reference to the variable that we created up at the top and that variable is pointing at our tag file. And I'm gonna update the object literal pass into render to use tag output since that's a new variable name. And with that in place, let's run our app. Refresh the browser. And this time we'll see that the page has been updated with our message that we put in the tag. And we can come back down, control C out of the application, and we'll move on. Now that we know that we can render our tag on the server and pass it as part of our template output, I wanna go update the tag and start doing things a little more exciting than just showing static text. So we'll go into hello world.tag. I'm gonna update the output to reference a property on our options object in an expression, just like we've done with previous tags in our other videos. So this time it'll say hello comma ops.first name. Now we need to go back to our app.js file and make sure that that first name value gets into our tag. So in the past when we've done this on the client side, we've passed our values into riot.mount. Well, the same thing holds true for riot.render in that we can pass it the tag to render as well as a second argument, which is an object literal. And this time we'll pass it first name John. And with that in place, we'll run our app and refresh our browser and we'll see that we get hello comma John as our output. And again, I'll stop the app and clear out the terminal. Now let's make our tag a little more interactive. I'm gonna go back into my tag file. I'm gonna add an input tag, type text, name, f name. I'm also gonna add a button to go along with this input. We'll give it a label of update name, and then I need to give that button an on-click event. So we'll say on click equals update name. And now we're gonna need some script tags so that we can create the function for update name. Inside the script tags, we'll go ahead and we'll add that empty function, update name. And our update name function is gonna take the value out of that text input and assign it to options.firstName. Now that we've updated our tag to be a little more interactive, we need to compile it for use on the client. Right now, the server-side rendering is not gonna load a JavaScript file into the browser in order for the tag to continue interacting with us. 
So we still need to do the steps that we've done in previous videos where we run our riot command to turn this tag file into an output JavaScript file. By creating a public directory, And then in the terminal, I'm going to run my riot command and I'm going to tell it to put my output in tags.js inside that public folder. We'll see that it created tags.js and we can see that that's the JavaScript output for our hello world tag. Now we need to update app.js to tell it to use that public directory that we just created to serve static files. So go into app.js. And we'll add a line, app.use, express.static, and we'll pass it the path to that public directory. Now we need to go into our index.html template file. We need to reference our tags.js. And we're also going to need a reference to riot.js on the client. So in this case, I'm just going to use a CDN. And even though we're rendering our tag on the server, that's not going to do the client side mount that we need. So we're going to add a set of script tags with a call to riot.mount. Now that we have this, what's going to happen is the tag is going to render on the server. It's going to be loaded into the template. It's going to be passed back down to the browser as part of the response. And then our riot.mount is going to run and it's going to clear out the options object because we're not passing anything into it here. So what we need to do is set up some variables that we can use on the server and get loaded into the client through the template so that when Riot mounts the tag again, once the page is loaded, it's a seamless transition and the server content stays in place until the tag is interacted with. So we're gonna go into app.js And we're going to add a variable called starting name. And I'm going to give it a different name this time, just so it's easy to see that it's working. And then we're going to update our response.render to pass in first name colon starting name. And now I want to go into my template. And I want to use that variable in the template. So this might look a little bit confusing, but what's happening is we're calling riot.mount on the client. We're passing it an asterisk to tell it to load all the tags, which in our case is just the hello world tag. And then we're passing it an object literal with the first name property. So the variable in double brackets is going to be swapped out for the actual value on the server. And then when this hits the client, it'll be first name and then Susan in quotes so that when riot.mount runs on the client, it'll basically be seamless because the server rendered HTML will have also used that same first name value. So I'm gonna go back to app.js and I'm gonna make sure that I'm using the starting name variable in my initial render on the server. So I replace starting name or I replace the first name value with starting name and that should hook everything up so that our tag gets rendered on the server, that output HTML is loaded into our template, our template gets run through the Swig templating engine, so any variables inside of that can be swapped out on the server, sent to the client, and once it hits the client, Riot's gonna mount that tag again, and everything will function just like it did when we did nothing but client-side tags. So let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna run my app. And I'm gonna go back into my browser and I'm gonna run this. And we'll see that our name Susan came through everywhere. And we'll just make sure this works. And I can type a name into the input, click the button and it'll update. And all of that interaction happens on the client just as expected. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please feel free to leave it. And thank you for watching.